whether you've said it before, and, and, and to, to, to share your message that, you know, I'm hey, not taking the, the word God lightly, but I'm just saying that, you know what, I'm looking way too serious nowadays. And thank you, Brother Efren. Every time, I don't know if you guys see that YouTube on SDFC, the time that you put your eye, it's on pause. So here I am like this, and then you press play, and then that, now my face starts moving like, oh, thank you for that. <laughs> and then I was going to give him a hard time. I was looking for the lapel. Every time I'm in the lapel, I know bro, Brother Everett has to move his camera left and right. So he said it, we don't have it today. I'm like, hmm, that's kind of suspicious about that. <laughs> anyway, before we start, um, you know, um, I just got to share where my heart is. Um, but before we start, any testimonies of how guys just answering prayers, any uh, um, testimonies? Um, you know, I, I'm going to cause the youth to rise up today. Is uh, uh, Jesus Elizabeth? Hey, how are you guys? Man, how, how do you guys feel about being here in church? Good? Alright. Any answered prayers? Now, you guys been praying? Yeah. You? Yeah. Come on. What are you praying for? I just like to hear. Come on, man. Jesus? Alright, you can stand right there. What are you been praying for? Alright. Alright. You know, um, I had a meeting with the kids of you, um, I think it was last week, and one of the prayers that we had was yes, um, these kids really want their mom to find a job here so they don't have to go back to Las Vegas. And, and, and you know, um, you know, you, man, they love you so much. They, they, got, they got prayers, prayer warriors. So, Sister Marianne, how well, awesome your kids are. Praise God. Um, also, Pastor uh, um, had some, some um, what do you call it, a sermon uh, a couple of days ago on YouTube, uh, SBFC, and I was just touched. Um, he asked a question, or he posted a, a statement saying, wouldn't it be great if we are like um, more godly? Or God like, you know, I'm paraphrasing that, but he, he posted a, a, a statement. Wouldn't it be great if we were um, godly or more God like that we see people just like God sees our heart, not any physical uh, aspect or any type of outwardly uh, way? So, you know, that, that stuck to my heart. And, and, you know, I saw a pastor in a different light. You know, um, I've been seeing pastor. Um, uh, going out with him and, 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 and sitting at the table, we've been talking, you know, I, I consider this man not just my, my head pastor or my, my um, senior pastor, but I consider him as a friend. You know, I'm going to put him on, uh, on the spot today, because I already thank him for this, but things are going on in my life and, and, and my family's life. And how awesome is it that I can share this with my pastor, with my friend? And how awesome is that, that friend sharing and, and saying here, you know what, um, um, there's help uh, he offered. And, and I felt his love. You know, um, Pastor has a big heart. And I think a lot of us here can testify how, how he's um, um, very giving. So, you know, praise God for, for Pastor. And, you know, I guess today I'm not going to preach, I just want to share, I just want to sit like we're on a couch and we're all laid back in our couch and we're just going to share the message, what the message is. Um, today's scripture is from, um, we're going to read from, it's on Matthew, You underline it, you highlight it, you circle it, 
any time that you find therefore, because the Apostle Paul uses therefore, but what did Jesus Christ use therefore? Actually, in my Bible, it's already read when every time Jesus Christ is speaking. Um, it's already read, but you know, therefore, Jesus Christ said therefore. When Apostle Paul says it, we underline, we highlight, we, we just remember that therefore, and then what follows is what's so important. But Jesus Christ now is speaking. He's saying therefore. So this is how it goes. Um, Matthew 7, verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And then we all know what happens. Uh, um, the rain came down, the stream rose, and the winds blew and, the, and beat against the house. Yet, it did not fit, uh, fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears the words of mine and does not put them in, into practice, it is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came, the streams rose, and, and the same thing, the wind blew and beat against the house, but it fell uh, with a great crash. Um, so this is what God's been telling me about what that scripture was about and, and what God's been uh, exposing in my life. Um, you know, there, there, there's, there's this word, word of God, that we all have heard, we all have read, yes? And we hear it uh, week after week uh, when we go to church. So, Jesus Christ is saying, you've heard from me. Everyone who is a believer in this place has heard from Jesus Christ. Um, now, the level, the degree of, of, of how much we've heard it is the time that we spend in reading the Word and also going to church and then having fellowship and also having to go to Bible study. So there's different levels of our growth and, or, or levels in, in, in how much we've heard from, from Jesus. But He said, all you have heard. And then the next part about that is, now what you've heard, what you've learned, put that into practice. So, God was just revealing to me that then, you've already heard who I am. You know, Father God, yeah, Jesus Christ said that Father God gave me all authority uh, in, in heaven and in earth. So God himself, Father God already gave Jesus all authority. He said, this is who I am, and you've heard of me. Then you've heard that, that, that I'm your Savior and your Lord, right? Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. And what ended up happening, you know, all of us have heard. Everybody has been exposed to this word. Um, but then the very next part about it is putting it into practice. So, God just revealed to me that, that here on earth, we have a personality. Now, I want to tell you who Ben is. Ben is born in the Philippines, in a Filipino culture. Ben has been raised up as a Filipino, actually kind of grew up in a Catholic-based um, um, faith. Um, ben grew up... Um, Parents can kind of say, hey, you know, you can't really do that much, or don't do that. You know, you're doing wrong. Um, so Ben was also raised in, in a way that, that, you know, my personality was shaped based on how I was born, my culture, how I was raised, how this world put into me, um, how my parents put into me. So my personality it is in reality against what God is. Because what ended up happening, I started to, to find out who I really am by reading this word. You know, there's a, there's a heavenly personality that we have, a heavenly identity that um, um, we all have. Our heavenly identity versus our personality. Our heavenly identity is like, um, um, I think my wife said it uh, in a perfect kind of sense. It's our Father's heart that becomes ours. So we have a heavenly identity that, that, that if you look at God's eyes, you get to see who you are in a point of view of, of God seeing you as. You know, if you receive Jesus Christ, who does the Father see you as? You know, um, um, if you have Jesus in your heart, uh, Jesus Christ said that, you know, I made you righteous unto me, that you are righteous, that you are worthy. You know, um, there's a big struggle because what ended up happening, man, uh, I have a personality that, that, that I grew up, 
I'll be 30 now, I'll be 40 this year, this coming month, this month actually I'll be 40, but for 34 years, when I accepted the Lord when I was 34, I had this persona, a uh, personality that goes against what God is. Now all of a sudden I said, I receive Jesus, yes. Now you, you start to receive that you need to deny yourself, you need to die to yourself, but what comes after that? Now you need to start living of who your identity in Christ or earth who your identity in the heavenly realm is. And God was just speaking, you know what then? Step up. You know, um, um, your, your very nature, your personality is going everything against who you are that I created you to be. So, in terms of, of, of who we are in Christ, you know, um, um, King David had a persona that was so heavenly that, that I don't go over it with you guys well because this is what God revealed to me. You know, in, in, in 1 Samuel, um, I think it was in verse, um, starting in 16, I, I'm, I'm not, we're not going to go over the whole thing, but you know, the pastor was just having a sermon about that a couple of ago and how he touched me that, that I was reading on that as well. But in, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, now just remember, we have a heavenly persona, which is our identity in heaven. We also have a personality that, that is here on earth. And what Jesus Christ is saying, you know, we need to take up this heavenly persona of who we are. So King David, basically, uh, the way that, that he was anointed in, in chapter 16, um, um, Samuel the prophet was um, told by the Holy Spirit, you know what, go to Jesse. <coughs> in Bethlehem, and then he has a son that you will anoint as king, because I'm no longer favoring Saul, but you know, go. So Samuel, being a, um, a obedient servant of God, a prophet, went to Jesse, and that's what um, chapter 16 is, and then Jesse saw that, you know, um, Jesse had like eight sons, and then Samuel saw uh, um, the oldest son, the oldest son uh, um, was they in stature, handsome looking, you know, physically fit. And then uh, um, Samuel was like, hey, that's him. That's going to be the next king. Because he was just saying, oh, this guy looks like uh, Saul. Remember Saul when he was uh, uh, picked out to be king? He was handsome, fit. Um, so he was just thinking that this guy is it. But the Holy Spirit told him, no, that's not him. And then... Um, Samuel said to Jesse, the father, he said, hey, you know, do you have any more sons? Yes, I'll call them. So it ended up happening. Son after son after son came before Samuel. And the Holy Spirit saying, no, that's not him. No, that's not him. No, that's not him. And then Samuel's like, hey, do you have any more? Is there any more kids that you have? Because God told me that, that your, one of your sons will be king. And then he said, well, uh, man, um, I do have this boy. His boy. He's still uh, tending to my sheep. He's not even worthy to come yet. But, you know, let me call him anyway. So David was like the last pick. So here comes David, a little boy. I, I, I'm not quite sure how old I was trying to dig out, maybe 13, 14, 15. Um, so basically, here comes little David walking. And then Samuel, Holy Spirit prompted him. That's him. Get, get this horn filled with oil. Um, um, and then anoint this guy because this is the king. So this is... This is where, where I'm at. Okay. In verse, uh, you go, verse 13, past, uh, chapter 16, verse 13, I'm just going to read it real quick. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, David, in the presence of his brothers. Just remember this. Man, uh, Saul, Holy Spirit told Saul, get your horn of, of oil. I mean, told Samuel, that get your oil. Anoint that boy. And then he anointed David in front of his brothers. Remember that. In front of his brothers. All the brothers saw. In front of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. You know, I've often heard, it, I've heard this in the scripture. The, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon him. The Spirit of the Lord is on him. But this time, it says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon David and power. So, what ended up happening? Guess what? 
David was anointed to be king, but nothing changed. His circumstances are still there. He's still a young boy. He's still a shepherd. And you know what? Off he goes back to shepherding. And then um, his brothers, three of his brothers, became warriors and, 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 and uh, became uh, um, soldiers for Saul. And you remember the story about Goliath lining up every day for 40 days. He stood before the Israel armies and said, Hey, any of you guys want to take me on? Because anybody that could take me on and anybody could defeat me, yeah, we'll bow down. But remember, Saul and his soldiers said, No way. No way are we going to come before you. Every time Goliath spoke, they actually kind of uh, got scared and feared. That's what the, the Word of God says. But guess what? Jesse told uh, uh, um, um, David, hey David, you know what? I think your brothers are hungry. Go down to your brothers because you're still uh, uh, um, shepherding. Go down to your brothers, you know, um, give them some mana, some bread, and some cheese. So I'm thinking David gave them, you know, grilled cheese. The father's like, hey, you know, here's some grilled cheese, take it to your brothers. So here comes David. I'm walking, I'm walking. Here's David. Uh, I got some real cheese for you guys, but what's going on here? David heard Goliath. And Goliath was saying, you know, uh, uh, such thing about the, the, the soldiers of God, the armies of God. Man, he, he, he was just saying, wow, you know, you guys are wuss. You guys are just, who are, you, who are these guys? Are you guys supposed to be of God? And you guys can't even face me? See, David has a personality. He's been raised as the youngest, which is the least of them. David had a, 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 a personality of, he's just a shepherd boy. He's young anyway. He's nobody. He had a, a personality of, hey, David, you know what? You're only good for that. You're not, you can't even become a soldier yet. See, there's personalities that's being developed in David, right? Do you guys see that? You know, when he brought the, the, the cheese to, uh, the bread and the cheese to, to, to his brothers, you know what the brothers said? Man, his brother said, here we go. I just want to, uh, I just want to talk to you guys about, about this real quick. When David came to the, to the brothers to bring cheese and bread, the brother said, uh, this is Eliab, which is the, the eldest. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those uh, few sheep in the desert? And I know you, and I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Can you imagine? This is the same brother that saw his brother David being anointed with oil. That Samuel said, this is going to be the next king. See, David had a persona, a personality that his brother wanted to put him in. Wanted to keep him in his personality. He said, hey, you're nobody. Hey, you're just a shepherd. Hey, you know what? You're very conceited. You just want to gossip here. You just want to know what's going on. You know what? We have a nature in us. Our nature our personality that keeps pulling us down. Kidding, you know, there's a calling in David's life. The Samuel said, God said through Samuel, that you're going to be king, David. See, David had a personality that even his father says, hey, David, you know, you're, you're only good to, to bring the cheese and the, and the bread to your brothers. You're only good to be a shepherd. You're too young, and the brother was burnt with anger, burnt with anger, to, and said, who are you, David? What are you doing here, David? You're too young, David. You're never going to be a mountain anything, David. David, dude, get out of here. Anybody spoke word to you about that? Or actually, has yourself spoken word to you that way? Because somebody implanted it in you when you were growing up. Because that's how I feel. I feel like my, my personality was, was, was shaped this way because of, of how I grew and the culture that I have gone through and, and words that have been spoken into me. So I have a personality that, that keeps saying, man, you're never going to amount to anything. Hey, Ben, 
dude, get real, really? But at the same time, there was a calling. David knew as Samuel laid hands on him and anointed him, what did Samuel say? You're going to be king. So there's a heavenly persona that David took on and said, wait a minute, I'm going to be the king. Not being considered in big headed, but God said, I'm going to be king. So this is what happened. David said, you know what, I'm not going to respond to you, Eliab, my big brother who wants to put me down. You know what, and David said, he just turned back and spoke to another guy. He says, what's going on? So you don't want your, 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 your personality to keep pulling you down and responding to your personality because you have a heavenly identity that you got to keep talking to, keep uh, uh, communing with, and keep seeing who God sees you as. So what ended up happening, David said uh, to his brother, well, you know, forget you, I'm not going to listen to you. God already spoke to me, I'm going to be the king. So what ended up happening, he went again, uh, asked another soldier, and then, then, Goliath spoke and said, man, who among you wimps want to take me on? And then he even, and then David uh, said, you know what, to, to, to Saul, David said, you know what, your servant, your servant will go and fight him. So David said, you know what, sucks to be you, Goliath, sucks to be you, that today, I'm not king yet, but today, I'm going to fight you. Do, do you guys get that? Because in the near future, he's going to be king. He's not king yet. So he steps in front of the uh, light and says, you know what? I'm not king today yet. So that means I can't die. I have a heavenly identity that God had called me. That today is not my death. God said I'm going to be king someday. So here's my heavenly identity. I'm going to be king, so I'm going to stand before this Goliath who has been uh, saying all these things about my God, that I'm just going to step up and say, Lord, thank you. You crown me king, so I'm going to act like king even though I don't have the crown yet. But in the heavenly realms, I've already put the crown in my head. So David's, Goliath, Goliath said, you know what, David, wow, who is this kid? You know what, today, I'm going to cut your head off and I'm going to feed you to the birds. And then David said, hey, you know what, I raced that. I don't know if anybody played play poker. I raced that. And today, I'm going to start shaving you from the neck up. And today, my God's going to hand you over to me. And today, your carcass is going to be fed to the, to the, to the birds. And Gula has like, who is this kid? But guess what? They were just acting upon who he is in the heavenly realm. And what ended up happening? Well, David uh, stood before the Goliath. And he's, you know, even, even uh, King Saul was like, hey, wear this armor, wear this spear, or wear this uh, cloak. And David says, no, that's not me. David said, no, I only need to be who I am, who has, uh, God sees me as. He sees me as a king. As a, you know, he sees me as, as, as the son of the Most High God. So David stepped up and said, all I need is a slaying in a rock. Pebbles. What ended up happening, he slain Goliath. You know, there's that persona. There's that heavenly identity that, that, that you know, sometimes uh, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to understand, but if you could just see through God's eyes and see you, yourself, who God gave you to be, um, it, it's an awesome, awesome thing to just know that, that this mind of ours do not want to conform to our heavenly identity. Remember what, what Paul said in Romans 12 too? Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This mind goes against every nature of God. You know, I gotta admit, man, myself, man, forget about the enemy in the world, but myself goes against every nature of who God created me to be. But God called me His Son through Christ Jesus. God gave me a robe of His righteousness through Jesus. God gave me victory through Jesus. That I know who I am. You know what? Our pastor said it. He said that, that 
Now I could be wearing a shirt and a short versus wearing a suit. You know what? When I come uh, in a store or somewhere else, I come in a short, rag raggedy shirt. Nobody's gonna pay attention to me. But when I come in a suit, dressed up, you know, for some reason too, I, I kind of feel like I'm standing more erect. Uh, no, not that he, pastor said, not that, that the suit added more money in my pocket or in my wallet. Same sort of circumstances. Poor man who wears a suit versus a poor man who wears a shirt and a uh, uh, short. Circumstances are the same. But nothing has changed. But in that instance, when you start to put on the righteousness of Christ, when you start to, to, to walk in a victory that God already has given you, when you start to feel that you are worthy because He has called you, there's an elevation of your mind, a transformation of your mind, that you begin to see the Father's heart, and His heart says, this is my heart, this is my love, who my Son I've given you, and in my Son I've given Him all authority, and this is your authority now under my Son. So I'm just, I'm just like, wow, you give me authority, you give me a place in the heavenly realm where I'm victorious, in the heavenly realm, even though my circumstances still around me. Um, um, someone who, who has this, this, this sight where, Lord God, thank you. You anointed me, you made me a king, you made me a priest, you made me a saint. That yes, I'm not walking, walking accordingly. I'm not there yet. But yes, Lord. He said, then you heard this, right? Yes, Lord, I'm hearing it. Now, walk and put it into practice. You know, quick question. Uh, anybody think that there's frustrations in heaven? I don't think there's any frustrations. Is there any anger in heaven? I don't think there's any anger in heaven. Is there any unforgiveness in heaven? Any pride in heaven. Because the way I see it, the person that we are, in, in, uh, the, our identity in heaven, you know, God said, you know, whatever we find here on earth is bound in heaven. But we, let's go around. Whatever is bound in heaven, who we are in heaven is bound here on earth. Who we are in heavenly realms should also manifest here on earth. Because God said, you already heard Hey, Ben, let me put a mirror in front of you. Yes, Lord. He puts the Word of God as the mirror. And he says, Ben, you're not going to see yourself. But you're going to see through my eyes who you are in Christ. The scripture stood out like you're more than a conqueror, Ben. Then, just like he told Gideon. Another story about Gideon. Gideon. God called him a man of valor. In, in the NIV it says that a mighty warrior. Gideon, a mighty warrior. But Gideon's response in, in Judges 6 and 7, Gideon's response was, you know what? I'm the least of this. In my tribe of, 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 of people, which is called uh, the tribe of Manasseh, you know, he said, I am the least now, how am I hearing my God saying that I am a man of valor? That I am a mighty warrior? Wait, God, wait a minute. Did I just hear that right? Let me tell you who I am, God. Let me tell you my personality, God. He said, I am the least. He said that the, in the tribe of Manasseh, that that's not me. I'm just a sifter of wheat, God. This is his personality. But God says, you know what, son? I have your heavenly identity, a man of valor, a mighty warrior you are. And Gideon couldn't get that. But it took a while. He kept testing God. God, you know what? If, if you send out the mist and the wool has this wet and the ground is not, then it's really came from you. And then the other day he said, God, if you send the mist down uh, in the land but not in the wool, then okay, it's you, God. And then he tested him some more, and then finally he got it. Can you imagine 
Gideon started with 32,000 armies. And then that 32,000 armies that was supposed to be facing uh, uh, multiple armies ended up becoming 300. But see, God called him a mighty uh, valor, a warrior, that he said he would deliver Israel. So he had a heavenly persona, a heavenly identity that he took on before he even got there. He took on and put it on. He said, hey, this is my suit. I'm wearing a suit now. It changes my persona to who Christ is, is in me. And now I can feel like, oh, thank you, God, that you have made me righteous unto you. Thank you, God, that you have made me worthy, that your precious power of, of, of your shed blood comes me of all my sin. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that, that as I read the words, the mirror that you put before me, I don't see my old self. I don't see my personality anymore. I see the heavenly identity that you wrote in this word, who I am in you. Then now I get to live and practice. And as I have heard him, as I have read him, you know, we, we go back, he said that, that, you know what, the wind will come and blow, the flood will come, the storm will come, and he said, but you are like a wise man, that you built your foundation on your heavenly realm, your heavenly identity, that not the wind, not the flood, not the storm, will knock this house down because you are founded in your heavenly identity which is in Christ Jesus. And I thought, you know what, I'm out for the last like, week or two, you know, Brother Vince was prophesying about, man, you're not going to recognize who you are. I pray to God that all of us do not recognize who we are anymore. Because when we start putting the mirror the old self is gone. And now we get to see who we are as God the Father sees us. Man, there's great victory in seeing our heavenly um, uh, identity. You know, Jesus Christ, if, if you don't mind, it was in... What's this? Let me look at this real quick. Jesus Christ read uh, in Luke 4, um, verse 18. Remember, all the people said, hey, this, this, this is the carpenter, son of Joseph. Um, he was raised in, in, and, and, and came back uh, to, his, uh, to Nazareth. And, 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 and what ended up happening then, we see that people saw him as Joseph's um, son. But he said, don't you guys know that I have a heavenly identity? That I'm going to reveal to you guys who I am. Jesus Christ said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach the good news of the, to the poor. He has sent me to, the, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recover the sight for the blind, to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He just told them, who he is, that he, that the Spirit of God is upon him, that he is the anointed one, that he will heal, he will set the captives free, that he will uh, uh, set back, restore the, the sight of the blind. And he said, I will declare blessings and favor. And, and it's an awesome thing because the same Jesus that proclaimed this revealed his heavenly identity is revealing to us who we are because He is in us. Hey, do you feel like the Spirit of God is upon you? Because He said, wait. Because the Spirit is coming. You know, in Acts, just like today when you receive Christ, He said, my Spirit will come upon you. And He said, all authority that's been given unto me, He said, I'm giving you. So, when Jesus Christ said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, isn't that the same as for each and every one of us, that the Spirit of God is on us. This is our heavenly identity that we need to find here on earth. The Spirit of God is upon each and every one of us. And He said, you are anointed.
to preach, to share the good news to all the poor. He said that you are anointed, just like David. Do you guys feel the anointing oil when the Spirit of God says, you are my anointing, you are my called, you are chosen. And then he also said that, that, that he has called you to proclaim freedom. You know, whatever God freed you from, any addiction, any bondages, God said, I freed you from that. And now all of a sudden, he said, what do you do with this freedom? Well, he said, you now can proclaim the same freedom that you are received to all those that are bounded. To all those. You know, I, I see it as this. If God healed you from cancer, man, every people that, 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 that is around you with cancer should not be safe around you. Because you're going to declare to that person that's next to you that has cancer, no, this is who God is. God is a God that heals. God can heal that cancer. God can take away that cancer. That all those people that are around you who are still bound to the same um, thing that you were bound in before but you've been set free, those are the people that He said that you will set free as well because you're going to proclaim. And then He also said that you will recover the sight of the blind. As God has shown you your heavenly realm, your heavenly identity that you have every right to show and share to every sin, single body that you will meet that says, hey, open up your eyes because Christ sees you as you are worthy. You are righteous. Walk accordingly to who God made you to be. And then he said, you were released oppressed and then proclaimed, hey, how many here has talked to somebody today and said, hey, blessings and favor upon you from our Lord Jesus Christ, as He has blessed me and favored me in my walk with Him, I just want to release the same blessing unto you. Because Jesus Christ is saying this is what we're called to do. This is our heavenly identity that needs to be bounded here on earth so we could now release all of these things that Jesus Christ is. I think I see somebody peeking outside, so it might be time. Um, I want to close with this, though. You know, 2 Corinthians 10.5, we demolish every argument and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I'm telling you, our personality, who we are, our nature, goes against everything God is. Our thoughts, our fears, our doubts, our pride, our anger, our unforgiveness, all of us, our personality goes against everything that God is. And then Paul is saying, take captives of all that thought. Take all of that. And then now put it under the cross. Make it obedient to Christ. The opposite of that is now, when you do that, when you take all those thoughts captive, now take every thought that is in heaven of who you are. Take this. Take that. You're, yes, you're a victor. You're a conqueror. Yes. The Christ that won it all for us gave all of, all, all of it to us. Now take all those captives. Our Heavenly Father's thought about us. Take all of that. What the Word of God says about who we are, take captive of that. See, I know I've been dying to myself. Part of that is taking all those thoughts that, that, that my personality, who I am, needs to go under the blood of Christ, make it obedient. But after dying to myself, now I need to live. I need to pick all my heavenly uh, um, persona, my per uh, heavenly identity of who I am in Christ. And I want to close with this. If your thoughts today if your personality today led you to a place where you don't want to be, then have new thoughts. If your thinking, if your personality led you to where you are today that you do not like, God says, I have something better. He said, have new thoughts. Have my thoughts. See yourself or how I see you. 
I gave you my heart, put my heart in you today. And it says in uh, Philippians 4, 8, it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. He said, think about all those things that Father God thinks about you. Your heavenly identity. Read the Word of God. And put it and look at it as a mirror. Not to show who you're not, but to show who you are. So he said, think about all these thoughts about Father God thinking about you. Noble, you're righteous. Yes, you are lovely. Yes, you're pure. And he said, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Jesus Christ will reveal to you who he is. He said, I am the Spirit of the Lord is in me. I've been anointed. I've been this. I've been that. I've been set to, to, to cause the, the, the bondage free, to, to release the oppress, and to declare favor and blessings. This is who I am. He said, whatever you've heard, whatever you've read, whatever you've heard from pastors, whatever you, 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 you've um, um, heard in fellowship and sharing, somebody's testimony, he said, put it into practice. Put into practice who your heavenly identity is. Put it into practice who our Father thinks of us. Acts. You know, I'm hoping that yes, we begin to see each other in a whole new different way. That we no longer we, we, um, um, recognize our own selves. But now we start to recognize and manifest who Christ is in us. But that takes us in submitting all of our personalities, our thoughts, our, our past. All the things that who we are needs to die and be denied and now let's pick up. Where God says, think about all my thoughts about you, son my daughter, and I act upon that. And I thought, oh Lord, thank you so much that whatever we bind here on earth will be bound in heaven, but yes, whatever is bound in heaven, who we are, is also bound here on earth. We just need to claim it. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Um, I think we're having communion today.